Another really chilling development that we should keep our eye on that is heartbreaking as as much of this is that you have emerging church leaders and secret sensitive leaders and uh, purpose driven leader, you know, guys like Claren and Robert Schuller and Bill Hybels and uh, of course uh, Rick Warren signing a document called Loving God and Neighbor Together. As Christians, we know we can love God and neighbor together as we all follow Christ and obey the word of God and, and lay our lives down for one another. But when they're talking about that, they're signing a document that is a response to a Muslim document signed by 138 Muslim clerics called A Common Word Between Us and You. And both of these documents, the Muslims wrote first, and then you have the professing Christian response, is about unification and that we can only be one if we agree that we're worshiping the same God. And both documents affirm that document that Rick Warren and Brian McLaren signed uh, affirms that that the God of Islam is the God of Christianity. Both documents call Muhammad a prophet. Chillingly, the preamble to the so-called Christian agreement to the Muslim document signed by emergent, seeker-sensitive, and purpose-driven leaders states this, quote, Before we shake your hand in responding to your letter, we ask forgiveness of the All-Merciful One and of the Muslim community around the world, end quote. The so-called All-Merciful One is none other than Allah, this is a prayer to the sunless Allah, who is called the All-Merciful One throughout the Quran, and not to the true God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Here we see Rick Warren in his inaugural prayer for Barack Obama, when he prayed in the name of Isa, conflating the God of the Bible with Allah, the so-called compassionate and merciful one. And you are the compassionate and merciful one. It's important to understand that the specific formulation, compassionate and merciful one, which Warren used in his prayer and is used by professing Christian leaders in their agreement with Muslims when they ask the all merciful one for forgiveness, is a formal Islamic formulation for Allah and is used of Allah in the Quran in 113 of the 114 chapters. There should be little doubt that Rick Warren and the hundreds of signatories seeking the forgiveness of the Quranic God are praying to the sunless Allah, which the Bible calls Antichrist, and not the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. What's really tragic about this is the Quran nine different times denies nine different times that Jesus is the Son of God. Now how can you deny the incarnation, God in the flesh, and deny that Jesus is God and say that we have the same God? How can you deny that God is triune? deny Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and claim that we worship the same God. You really can't. And, and Muslims recognize, ultimately, that we have to deny the Trinity. In fact, the Quran specifically states that Muslims are to get Christians to cease and desist to believe in the Trinity. In fact, the common word document is based on a surah, a verse in the Quran, which states emphatically to make a common word between us and them, the Christians that calls the people of the book, and get them to deny or not to say that God is three or that they're, God is triune. So the Quran, as a war manual against Christianity, inspired by the spirit of Antichrist, is based on desire, Sharia law, to be presented throughout the entire world, and the affirmation of Allah as the only true God in the denial of the Trinity. In fact, I'll read a couple verses from the Quran that substantiate the point that I'm trying to make. Surah 4, 171 in the Quran says this, Believe in Allah and say not Trinity. Cease. It is better for you. Allah is only one God. Far is it removed from his transcendent majesty that he should have a son. In Surah 364, O oh, people of the book, that would be Christians, come to a common word between us and you, that we worship none but Allah. In other words, people of the book, Christians who are following the Bible, come to a common word with us Muslims, that we're not going to worship anybody but Allah, and that we associate no partners with him, i.e. the Trinity, i.e. Jesus Christ as the Son of God. And then it goes on to say, that none of us would take others as lords besides Allah. In other words, that would deny and exclude the idea that Jesus Christ is Lord. And the Bible teaches us that the denial that Jesus is Lord and the denial that he is the Son of God is the doctrine of Antichrist. Now think about this. It's important to understand that the very name of the Muslim document, they call it a common word between us and you. Christians, professing Christians, write back, like Rick Warren and Brian McLaren, sign and agree that, hey, yeah, we all worship the same God, i.e. loving God and neighbor together, meaning we're loving the same God. Therefore, 
we can hope to have world peace. And it's compromised in the gospel of Jesus Christ to bring forth this world peace movement, which is exactly what's going to happen under the kingdom of Antichrist. You have to deny that Jesus Christ is Lord, uh, take the mark of the beast, which is the name of the beast of numbers, named it by our cell in his kingdom. And it's interesting because uh, William Lane Craig, who is a top apologist and philosopher, he said that Rick Warren and these other men who signed on to this were basically signing up to become Muslims. And we put all these things together and we realize that 1 John 2.22 identifies uh, Antichrist. And there are many Antichrists that have come and that will come again. But there's an ultimate Antichrist as well. Is a denial. That spirit is a denial of the Father and the Son. And again, this is the movement that we're witnessing before our very eyes. And we're seeing much of Christendom being swept up into it through the purpose-driven movement, through the emerging church movement, through the seeker-sensitive movement.